So you love the design of big buoy top and bottom guard combat knives. Well, the Drop Forge Survivalist, now with handle scales, might be exactly what you're looking for. Since it's just a huge honking slab of 52100 high carbon steel. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at Gideon's Tactical. I'm Aaron, I'm your host, out in the woods, having a good time with the Drop Forge Survivalist. Now, what's really interesting is that Cold Steel, I, I didn't really realize it until I got my hands on this knife, they make some huge buoy knives and you know big combat style knives but to my knowledge this is the only one that's literally like a full tang exposed tang with handle scales most of them are either a stick tang or a full tang that have craton or other forms of polymer fully enclosing the handle so this has a level of durability that a lot of cold steel knives though oftentimes extremely durable just don't have and a lot of other knives on the market in general just don't have and particularly at this guard this guard is just a fully you know laser cut i'm assuming drop forged piece of steel there it's not a secondary piece of metal welded on or anything else like that or epoxied so that gives us massive durability on a very large combat buoy knife so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this tool today see what its capabilities are but does it still have some drawbacks you know you can sometimes have something that's so overbuilt it has limitations because of how overbuilt it is so we'll touch on that as well as we try to survive with the survivalist because guys oftentimes we have this idea that we're going to be out here in the woods you know fighting off bears and you know going into combat zones and you know end of the world type of scenarios but a lot of times you're going to probably be taking this just trying to survive a camping trip with the kids and that's what I did I took this out on a recent camping trip with the family as my one of my main camp tools as well as did a bunch of backyard work with it to get a real good feel for what this drop forward survivalist has to offer and if it can help you survive in a combat zone out in the outdoors or with a camping trip or in your own backyard all right folks let's go ahead just hit some basic specs here with you running some beautiful blade footage hanging out having fun with this tool now uh, as I said earlier this is made out of 52100 high carbon steel great steel um, and they have used that now with several of their drop forged blades and designs and I really connect with it um, I've used it on other tools from other companies and really like that steel. You're going to get a lot of performance, definitely an upgrade over 1095 and some of those other um, tool steels out there uh, and good edge retention, good lateral strength and durability. Now it has a very high, basically full flat grind into that swedge clip point, very thick clip. Um, so it's going to be tough, durable, but still be able to pierce well with a 90 degree spine. So again, survivalist, you could definitely throw sparks with that. It's got a Teflon coating on there um, in that kind of grade matte finish. Uh, it's going to be a maximum thickness of 0 0.21, so definitely over 3 16 but because of the kind of wide blade from edge to spine and the full flat, it still is a decent even performer like food prep task. I did some food prep around the campsite, and I was actually surprised that I could do it. It wouldn't be my first choice, but I could absolutely do it and wasn't you know just like mushing the apples and just really difficult and like, nah, screw this. It could actually do that, and then obviously finer carving and cutting with that really nice relief edge did very, very well, so I was very pleased with um, the finer t work. You know, if that's something that you are looking for in this type of tool as a survivalist you would want to be able to make feather sticks for a fire make a spear um, you know do those type of things it's going to do that well without issue and then obviously just the shape design it's designed as after their recon series uh, and i believe it's the recon scout is kind of what's designed after and so it's definitely designed as a combat large tool you're gonna have eight inches of overall reach so you will be able to slash pierce um, you have a lot of capability in that regard. If you are looking for a large combat tool, it will absolutely perform very, very well in that capacity. It's going to be 18 ounces, good balance point right there over the guard, even though it's just literally a piece of steel. Um, and you would think maybe that it would be handle heavy. It is not. It's balanced right through that guard there. So that's a good thing, not only for combat balance, if you need that, but also just for hacking and using in general. So it'll do a decent job as a chopper. It's not designed as a machete, you know, to just hack all day. But if you need to delimb some stuff, um, get a few lodge poles going or something like that in a survival situation, if you will. Um, you could do that delimbing stuff around the campsite, you know, whatever you may be doing, surviving that camping trip with your kids, it will do that. And uh, that'll just lead us into the handle design itself. 
which this is the difference between the old versions that had kind of a trough and no handle scales. And so you had to like wrap it or just deal with it. This now has a fuller handle, very contoured metal all around, which is really good. And then kind of like a skateboard texture almost on those handle scales that swell out. So the, the ergos are super good. You can see there uh, with my large size hands when I'm on that guard, that tons of real estate. I can back up. It's kind of got a contoured bird beak. It's not a, aggressive or angled sharply. So I would usually do about a three fingered grip um, and get some good, decent hacking done. And that skateboard texture didn't really cause any hot spots, regardless if I was carving or if I was doing hacking, even with my bare hands. So I did appreciate that. Good lanyard hole, so you can you know get some good wrist action if need be. And the the fullness of the handle really putting those handle scales on there really helped a lot. Now I don't like torque screw. Um, screws there, heads, I prefer Allen. Here's an example of something we're gonna look at in a second. I just prefer that. Uh, these tend to strip out, so uh, I wouldn't be jacking too much with these handle scales. Um, and I didn't have any loosening up with all the beating I did on it. Um, so that's just something, it's kind of as a data point. Uh, with these top and bottom guards, great traction for uh, harder combat or you know just harder survival use, camp use. Uh, but I like how the top guard is really contoured here and not abrupt say like on a k bar where it just comes straight up and even flares backwards and it's not fun to try and like get over and try to do finer carving tasks this feels great contouring the web of your hand really nicely and if need be you can get over and put your thumb right there and it's not really biting into your hand and it's kind of got a, a rounded um, smoother feel that when you are doing that it's not really causing an issue but most of the time you can just do a, a natural hammer grip and it's actually contouring the web of your hand very nicely so I appreciate that and obviously much more durable than say a K bar that has a stick tang and you know uh, the guard here can loosen up different things like that there's just a durability level that something like the drop forward survivalist is going to offer over say a combat knife like the K bar and that's a part of this design is that there's not a lot of combat knives like this that are either drop forwards like you see here or you know full tang um, you really got to go and look at a few knives maybe from say tops and there are other designers out there but I'm just going to run in here the operator seven just to give you some perspective that's a full tang my car to handle scales this thing is a monster it's 0 0.3 on the thickness um, so it's overbuilt to the max but very similar in size um, capability um, you know in that kind of vein of being just a super overbuilt combat knife with uh, you know top and bottom guards that work very similarly 1075 steel, not as good as steel as the 52100 that's on the cold steel. USA made, Taiwanese made, so just kind of keep that in the consideration. This guy is going to go for about $150 to $145 for the tops, uh, and you're going to be looking at about $70 for the Drop Forge Survivalist. Now, I got this from Cold Steel. They were willing to send it over to me so I could give you guys a data point, review this for you, show you what it can do, what it can't do, and so you guys can you know, make that choice. Now, I have links for you guys below if that's something you want to take a look at. You can go check out all those hyperlinks that we offer to you. Now, this is really the only sticking point with the design for me on the Drop Forge Survivalist. That because they have put handle scales that were not fully contoured like on, say, this tops, where you're only seeing the exposed tang and it's flush, with the handle scales, you're having a lot more metal that you're coming in contact with when you're gripping the knife. Now, on average temperatures, not a big deal. I left this out in about 95 degree heat all day, grabbed it. It was definitely warm to the touch. I wouldn't want to necessarily go to work with it. I would probably grab gloves. It wasn't so hot that I couldn't use it, but it's, it, it's gonna retain the heat and you're gonna be touching that heat all throughout the handle and in cold weather conditions on the flip side you know we live in the rockies i'm out sometimes in like 30 to 20 degree weather if you don't have gloves on it's gonna you're gonna feel that cold it's gonna fatigue your hand you know it's gonna stiffen your hand things to think about with this design that obviously are very quickly mitigated if you just want to wrap it with some skateboard tape or um, you know electrical tape or you could do hockey tape you know whatever you can easily do that and completely mitigate any sort of cold or heat issues but that is something that i just kind of saw and noticed so you got to take that in consideration with the drop forge is that because you're coming into a lot more contact with metal 
temperature will be a factor on this knife for extended use. Now, if you just grab it and you're using it for five minutes or less or something, it's probably not going to be an issue. But if you, it's just something to note. That's the only thing. I wish it was a much more contoured, much more flush handle scale design, and they had just gone with Allen instead of Star Drivers, and then there would have been zero complaints. That's my only little sticking point with the handle design as it stands with the Drop Forward Survivalist. Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope it's been fun and entertaining. Give me the data, any of the drawbacks maybe that you see with the design. I look forward to hearing comments from you guys. I connect with this thing a lot. It's really cool. And particularly, again, giving us ultra strength right here with this guard, but also ultra comfort for this style of knife that normally you're just not going to see on a lot of other designs that are very popular that you've seen out there. And you're getting some really good high carbon steel, decent sheath, under 100 bucks. So it's hard to compete if this is the style you're looking for and you want ultra durability with the drop forged survivalist but look forward to hearing your guys feedback thoughts experience in the comments below i'm sure the other viewers do as well i invite you to watch the other video popping up right now subscribe again if you're not a current subscriber I invite you to become part of the gt family and always remember stay equipped stay prepared and we'll see you out there